Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study about what do we mean by SN2 reactions and what are the various conditions required for haloalkenes to undergo SN2 reaction. So, SN2 essentially means substitution nucleophilic and bimolecular. Just as we had seen in SN1 where it is unimolecular, SN2 reaction is bimolecular and the reaction rate is nothing but follows a second order kinetics. So, here you can see that the rate determining step depends both on the concentration of Rx and nucleophile and hence RDS is bimolecular. Let us try to understand the mechanism of SN2 reaction by taking an example. So, in this example, we have taken OH- as a nucleophile and a substrate is nothing but CH3Cl. So, you can see that unlike SN1 reaction which was a two-step process, SN2 reaction is a one-step process and no intermediates are involved. And if you look at the transition state, you can see that it has both the nucleophile OH- as well as the substrate which is a Rx or alkyl halide. And this is essentially the reason why the rate determining step depends on both the concentration of nucleophile as well as the alkyl halide, thus making RDS bimolecular. Now, you can also note that this particular transition state is highly unstable as carbon is bonded to 5 atoms. That is, bond formation between the nucleophile and the carbon atom that is CO bond and the bond breaking between the carbon atom and the halogen atom takes place simultaneously and the, in the transition state you have 5 different bonds making it highly unstable. Another very important thing to note here is also that the nucleophile attacks the alkyl halide substrate in a backside way that is it attacks from the backside such that if you look at the product and the reactant you can see that the product has completely inverted configuration as compared to the reactant molecule. Now that we know that nucleophile attacks the Rx in a backside fashion any sort of steric hindrance should be avoided that is a bulky nucleophile or a bulky substrate will not be preferred in an SN2 reaction. That is this particular mechanism suffers greatly from steric inhibition. For the same reason the order of reactivity of alkyl halides towards SN2 reaction will be primary greater than secondary greater than tertiary. Let us try to understand why this reactivity order is this way. So, if you take a methyl halide you can see that the nucleophile does not suffer from any steric inhibition and can directly attack the CX bond. If you take a primary alkyl halide like ethyl halide you can see that there is CH3 bond CH3 here and the nucleophile can still attack or still reach the CX bond with ease. If you look at a secondary alkyl halide like isopropyl halide you can see that the it nucleophile it finds it much more difficult to attack the CX bond due to two major CH3 groups here. And similarly if you look at a tertiary alkyl halide you can easily see that it is not possible for nucleophile to approach the CX bond at all due to very high steric hindrance in case of tertiary alkyl halide. For the same reason, the order of reactivity of alkyl halides towards SN2 reaction based on its steric effects will be primary greater than secondary greater than tertiary. Now, let us quickly discuss what are the various conditions required for SN2 reaction to take place. So, you can see that SN2 reaction requires the presence of very strong nucleophile. In contrast to SN1 where we saw that the strength of nucleophile is completely irrelevant because the rate determining step essentially depends on the formation of a stable carbocation. It is also important to note that SN2 reaction is favored in the presence of polar aprotic solvent in contrast to SN1 reaction where polar protic solvent was preferred. So, why do we prefer polar aprotic solvents like DMF or DMSO in SN2 reaction? It is mainly because if you have a polar protic solvent, we are also using a very strong nucleophile which is which means we are mostly our nucleophile is a charged nucleophile and in the presence of polar protic solvent, these nucleophiles will get deactivated via hydrogen bonding with the protic solvents. So, now we have a very weak nucleophile because the once the nucleophilicity decreases via hydrogen bonding with polar protic solvents, we do not have a strong nucleophile to attack the Rx and the reaction does not take place. For the same reason, polar aprotic solvents is required for the SA2 reaction to take place which also helps stabilize the leaving group via solvation effects. Now let us quickly compare what are the major differences between SN1 and SN2 reaction. So as you can see here the nucleophile strength is irrelevant in an SN1 reaction whereas SN2 reaction requires the presence of very strong nucleophile. 
Now, uh, SN1 reaction is a two step process that is it in involves the formation of a carbocation while SN2 reaction is a one step process where a transition state is involved. Both the reactions require the presence of a very good leaving group for the same reason that the reactivity of alkyl halides would be Ri greater than RBr greater than Rcl greater than Rf because I minus is a much better leaving group as compared to Br minus which has better which is better than Cl minus and F minus. In SN1 reaction polar protic solvent is preferred while in SN2 reaction polar aprotic solvent is required. Now as far as stereochemistry is concerned in SN1 reaction we have both retention as well as inversion of uh, configuration taking place whereas in SN2 reaction inversion of configuration takes place. We will study in detail about what do we mean by retention and inversion of configuration and stereochemistry in our next video. I hope you are very clear on what is SN2 reaction, what are the conditions required for SN2 reaction to take place and also on the major differences between SN1 and SN2 reaction. Thank you.